Part four, the micronutrients. Now that we know what happens to the macronutrients when we eat them, let's look at the non-energy producing nutrients, the micronutrients. Remember from our sentence again, could Fanny play violin much worse? This is the violin much worse part, vitamins, minerals, and water. Although water isn't really a micronutrient, it's sometimes included in this group. For now, we'll talk about vitamins and minerals, the true micronutrients. Section A, vitamins. The first of the micronutrients are the vitamins. Vitamins are essential nutrients that are needed in tiny amounts. They prevent vitamin deficiency diseases, duh, and support optimal health. We have two categories for vitamins, fat-soluble and water-soluble. Fat-soluble vitamins are trapped in the fat cells of the body and absorbed first into lymph and then into the blood. Water-soluble vitamins are absorbed directly into the blood and are stored in the water-filled parts of the body. The four fat-soluble vitamins are A, D, E, and K. You can remember the four fat-soluble vitamins with the mnemonic, all dogs eat kittens. The water-soluble vitamins are the B vitamins and vitamin C. Like we said, the water-soluble vitamins tend to be absorbed directly into the blood. The fat-soluble vitamins travel first through lymph and then the blood. The lymph is fluid that surrounds the cells that make up the tissues in our bodies. Lymph contains protein and other constituents that have been lost from the blood. So anyway, most of the sources of fat-soluble vitamins are fats, and fat-soluble vitamins are transported, absorbed, and stored in fats, too. The water-soluble vitamins travel freely through the body, while fat-soluble vitamins usually require protein carriers. As far as storage of these two suckers is concerned, the water-soluble vitamins just circulate freely in water-filled parts of the body, while the fat-soluble vitamins are stored in fat cells. Excess water-soluble vitamins are excreted in urine while excess fat-soluble vitamins usually remain in fat storage sites. This means it's difficult to reach toxic levels of water-soluble vitamins, but toxic levels of fat-soluble vitamins are likely to occur when they are consumed in excess. So it's necessary to take water-soluble vitamins more frequently than fat-soluble ones, but not daily. The four fat-soluble vitamins are stored in the liver and adipose tissue until they are needed. You only need to meet the recommended dietary allowance for fat-soluble vitamins over time, not daily, because the body obtains the vitamins from storage as needed. Depending on the amount of vitamins stored in the body, people may go for a period of time with less than their daily intake without becoming deficient. Toxic levels of fat-soluble vitamins are possible, particularly if people use supplements. Let's look at each of the fat-soluble vitamins. Remember, all dogs eat kittens. First, vitamin A. The major roles of vitamin A are promoting vision, promoting cell differentiation, maintaining healthy skin, supporting the immune system, and promoting bone growth. Foods of animal origin are the best sources of preformed vitamin A. These include liver, fish, milk and milk products, butter, and eggs. Plants do not contain preformed vitamin A, but many contain pro-vitamin A, carotenoids. Carotenoid is just a form of carotene which is convertible to vitamin A. Chemically, it's a long aliphatic polyene chain composed of eight isoprene units. Vitamin A deficiency is a major nutrition problem in developing countries, but it's rare in the U.S. Providing children in developing countries with vitamin A supplements greatly reduces deaths from many infectious diseases. Beta-carotene is an orange pigment. It's easy to recognize foods with a lot of beta-carotene. They're orange as well. Carrots, pumpkins, squashes, you get the picture. Beta-carotene is a vitamin A precursor. A precursor is a compound that can be converted into a specific vitamin. However, not all dietary beta-carotene is converted into active vitamin A. Some acts as an antioxidant capable of protecting the body against disease. Beta-carotene is the carotenoid with the greatest vitamin A activity, which is to say it's actively converted into vitamin A a lot of the time. Most foods with vitamin A activity are brightly colored. Therefore, Americans are encouraged to eat dark green and deep orange vegetables and fruits. Now for the second fat-soluble vitamin, vitamin D. Our bodies can synthesize vitamin D with the assistance of sunlight. 
Thus, it is not an essential nutrient for our diet. As long as there's sunlight or ultraviolet light around, the special function of vitamin D is to promote normal bone formation. It raises blood concentrations of calcium and phosphorus. Vitamin D helps direct a complex bone making and maintenance process that involves many nutrients and compounds. Recent research suggests vitamin D may have other important functions, but these are not yet fully understood. Those who have a deficiency of vitamin D will develop rickets, a disease where bones fail to calcify normally. But vitamin D is not just important for healthy bones. It also supplies calcium to the nerves and muscles. Vitamin D deficiency affects large numbers of children outside the U.S. Vitamin D deficiency seems to affect underprivileged people the most. One of the common signs of this vitamin deficiency is a rounded, distended belly. That's one reason we often see photographs of malnourished children with bloated bellies. The range of safe intake of vitamin D is fairly narrow. Supplements should be used very cautiously, especially during times when you're outside in the sun regularly. Excess vitamin D contributes to kidney stones and life-threatening hardening of the arteries of the heart and lung. Only a few foods supply vitamin D. Liver, egg yolks, fatty fish, butter, and fortified milk are the primary sources. A strict vegetarian cannot meet vitamin D requirements without adequate sunshine, fortification, or supplements. However, most adults do not need to worry about obtaining adequate vitamin D. Ah! People who stay indoors and live in northern, cloudy, or smoggy areas can meet their vitamin D requirement with two glasses of vitamin D fortified milk daily. You will not reach toxic levels of vitamin D from prolonged sun exposure alone. However, you do risk premature aging of the skin and skin cancer. So wear sunscreen. Now for the third fat-soluble vitamin, vitamin E. Vitamin E is an antioxidant, which means that it protects many compounds from destruction by oxidation. Oxidation occurs when certain substances are exposed to and combined with oxygen. Vitamin E also stabilizes cell membranes, regulates oxidation reactions, and is especially important in the protection of polyunsaturated fatty acids and vitamin A. Vitamin E's antioxidant effect is critical in the lungs, where oxygen exposure is maximal. It protects against air pollutants, especially when engaging in aerobic exercise. It also seems to support the immune response, although at this point, we don't really know how it supports it. A deficiency of vitamin E is rare in humans. Erythrocyte hemolysis, or red blood cell breakage, is the classic sign of this vitamin deficiency. It is most common in premature infants. Toxicity is not as much of a problem with vitamin E as it is with vitamins A and D. Vitamin E is found in green and leafy vegetables, wheat germ, whole wheat products, liver, egg yolks, nuts, seeds, and polyunsaturated plant oils such as margarine, salad dressings, and shortenings. Finally, the last fat-soluble vitamin is vitamin K. Vitamin K is critical in the process of blood clotting. A deficiency of this vitamin or any of the other blood clotting factors results in hemorrhagic disease, which is characterized by excessive bleeding. Vitamin K is also important in the synthesis of bone protein. Vitamin K, like vitamin D, can be obtained from a non-food source. Bacteria in the gastrointestinal tract synthesize vitamin K in the body, but that volume is not sufficient to meet our full requirement. Vitamin K deficiency is rare but fatal. Vitamin K toxicity is also rare, but possible symptoms include blood cell hemolysis, jaundice, and brain damage. Significant sources of vitamin K, other than gastrointestinal tract synthesis, are liver, leafy green vegetables, members of the cabbage family, and to a lesser extent, milk, meat, eggs, cereal, fruits, and other vegetables. Now, let's dive into those water-soluble vitamins. First, the B vitamins. They are thiamine, riboflavin, biotin, B6, folate, and B12. These B vitamins help the body use the energy-yielding nutrients, carbohydrates, fats, and protein, but are not actually fuel. Without the B vitamins, however, the body would lack the ability to produce energy. Let's look at each of the B vitamins separately. First, thiamine is one of the B vitamins used in energy metabolism. It also supports normal appetite and nerve function. Prolonged deficiencies of thiamine can result in the disease beriberi. Symptoms include damage to the nervous system, heart, and other muscles. 
Thiamine is in many nutritious foods, especially in pork products and in rich breads and cereals. Excess cooking can destroy thiamine. Using a cooking method such as steaming or microwaving that uses little water will help conserve this and other water-soluble vitamins. Next, riboflavin. Like thiamine, riboflavin, another B vitamin, facilitates the release of energy from nutrients. It also supports normal vision and skin health. A deficiency of riboflavin may result in a skin rash, inflamed eyelids, and or cracks in the mouth, and a painful tongue. Milk and milk products are excellent sources of riboflavin. It is also found in meat, leafy green vegetables, whole grain or enriched breads, and cereals. Light destroys riboflavin. That is why milk is usually sold in cardboard or opaque containers. Next, biotin, another B vitamin, is important in energy metabolism, fat synthesis, amino acid metabolism, and glycogen synthesis. It is widely available in foods. A deficiency of biotin is rare. Symptoms of deficiency include scaly dermatitis, hair loss, loss of appetite, nausea, hallucinations, and depression. The next B vitamin, B6, is used in amino acid and fatty acid metabolism and helps to make red blood cells. It also influences cognitive development, immune function, and steroid hormone activity. People who fail to obtain enough B6 will experience weakness, irritability, and insomnia. Untreated, this will progress to growth failure, impaired motor function, and convulsions. B6 is available in meats, fish, poultry, potatoes, and some green vegetables and purple fruits. Heat destroys B6. Unlike other water-soluble vitamins, excess B6 is stored in the muscles and not simply excreted in the urine. This means it can reach toxic levels. Symptoms of toxicity include bloating, depression, headaches, and irreversible nerve damage. Some people take B6 to cure carpal tunnel syndrome, sleep disorders, or premenstrual syndrome, PMS. However, self-prescribing can be hazardous to your health and is not recommended. Another of the B vitamins, folate, is also known as folic acid or folicin. Its primary purpose is DNA synthesis. Therefore, it is important in new cell formation. Research has focused on the relationship between folate and the prevention of neural tube birth defects. These defects occur in the early stages of pregnancy, often before the woman realizes she is pregnant. That's why the Public Health Service recommends that all women who are capable of becoming pregnant take 0.4 milligrams of folate daily. This is the first time the Public Health Service recommended a dietary supplement for the general population. If women ate the recommended minimum five servings of fruits and vegetables daily, supplements would not be necessary. But many women only consume about 0.2 milligrams of folate in their daily diet. If you think of foliage when you think of folate, you will be able to identify a major source of folate, leafy green vegetables like asparagus. Another B vitamin is niacin, which is also known as nicotinic acid. Niacin is a partner with riboflavin in converting proteins and a small amount of glycerols from fats to glucose for the eventual release of energy. Lack of niacin is connected with the disease pellagra, which is characterized by dermatitis and failure of the nervous system. Pellagra can be fatal. Good sources of niacin include most meats, peanuts, dried beans, and peas. Finally, the B vitamin B12 is used in new cell synthesis. It helps to maintain nerve cells and helps to break down some fatty and amino acids. A deficiency of B12 results in a disease called pernicious anemia. The symptoms include large cell type anemia, a smooth tongue, fatigue, and degeneration of nerves leading to paralysis and hypersensitivity of the skin. Excess consumption of folate can mask pernicious anemia. B12 is readily available in animal-derived products. Vegans need to be sure to obtain adequate amounts from supplements or fortified foods. The water-soluble vitamin not in the B family is vitamin C. Vitamin C, also called ascorbic acid, is essential in collagen formation. Collagen is the protein that provides firmness and support to tissue cells. Think about all those skincare products that contain collagen to firm and tone your skin, promising younger looking skin. Like vitamin E, vitamin C is an antioxidant, which means it prevents the destruction of cells. It also strengthens resistance to infection.